the local pension board committee held today on the 3rd of July. Um, item number one, apology for absence. So we have apologies registered. So we've got Dan Norton and Richard and Gast. Okay, lovely. Um, declarations of interest. Uh, I will read this out to you. Members of the Fire and Rescue Authority are reminded of their personal responsibility to both verbally and in writing declare any personal and or prejudicial interest in respect to matters contained in this agenda in accordance to the provisions of the Local Government Act 20, uh, 2000. So, well, yeah, 2000. <laughs> Sorry. The Fire and Rescue Authority stand in orders and members code of conduct. Okay, everybody, anybody got any declarations? See no. anything? No? Right. Right, I'll move on to item number three, which is the chairperson's announcements, and I have no announcements to make. So we're on to item four, the minutes of the local pension uh, board committee held on the 23rd of January, which I presume you've all had a copy. Yes, I did. Um, I will go through, through these page by page. So, uh, oh, these are numbered. They were numbered. Uh, page five, six, seven, and eight, and nine. Does any members wish to raise any items on these matters? No? No? Right. Um, I'll move these as true record, and can I have a seconder? I'll have a second. Thank you very much. Right, on to our number, item number five, the review of the key performance indicators. And I presume this uh, report will be presented by Ian Trainer. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, hopefully, you can all hear me. The um, the following report provides uh, board with an update of the key uh, performance indicators and some of the key activity undertaken um, by the RCT uh, pension team on behalf of um, South Wales Fire. So, moving on to um, page uh, appendix one on page fifteen. And, and apologies, this 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 period, there are obviously a number of tables contained within the report. Um, this is due to um, the fact that we, at this period, provide an update on the whole of the performance for the whole of last year to the 31st of um, March uh, 23, plus then the new two months that um, um, that are provided then for April and May's performance of this year. Um, so the first table there on page 15 um, sets out uh, the protected 92 scheme and transitional members for the whole year. And then moving on to page 17 there, there there's the um, performance, the same performance for April and May of this year. Um, where there was 100% performance on, on that particular table. Page 19 is the 2006 scheme and transitional members. Again, that reflects our current perform our performance for the whole of the year. And obviously we would have had those discussions through board throughout the year at those dif different junctions around um, some of the performance there displayed in that table. And again, then on page 21, is April and May's performance for the 2006 transitional scheme. Members will note that there's there was um, um, on the preserve benefits processed within 10 days on that table for May, we were 97.1% there. So we undertook 34 cases in the comments field on page 20, 21 there, 34 cases completed one over target so i so i've made some inquiries around that one day uh, that that one instance and instead of the plan 10 days it did actually take us 18 days to do i'm still doing some further digging as to to, to why that was the case now we've we've recently recruited um a number of um individuals to the rct pension scheme given all the additional work that's come our way around mcleod um, so there's a, there's a lot of training going on at the moment, and we've extended that training across fire as well to make sure we have uh, sufficient resources really to deal with um, the extra work that's, that's beyond the day work. Now, 
now some of this might be linked to to training but i will make those inquiries for for board around that one case um where where we were unfortunately over target um moving on to page 23 um this is the first time we've been able to split out now on our performance the scheme uh the 2015 only members so from now on, we'll have three three tables moving forward, which will show the three distinctions between the schemes and the performance on that basis. So there we have 100% um, there on those seven cases that were completed during April and May there um, for that current reporting period. So before I move on to appendix two, does does are there any comments, Chair, on 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 those? those performance on appendix one. Who wants to raise anything? No, nope. we we'll move on then. Okay, thank you, Chair. I'll move on to appendix two. So um, this picks up on some of the key administrating, administrative activity undertaken uh, during the period. Uh, member self-service is always pleasing to note that um, you know we've got significant take up by the fire fire, fire members in terms of the member self uh, member self-service. It's clearly important information and accessibility to the records, and it's and it's and it's good to see that there's a there's a there's a strong uptake of that service. Um, Scheme member complaints. We have received um, one formal complaint during this period through, uh, through, through the sort of IDRP process, which, which was, um, uh, I know it's uh, one of the, the processes next on the agenda that Alison's going to pick up for you. Um, on this particular case, uh, here is a referral that came in. It's an employer um, consideration. So we've passed that on to Alison for review. Are you going to comment, Alison, on that now, or? Yeah, uh, yeah, thanks, Ian. So, so we've got the bundle of um, information relating to this individual. We're currently working through it, um, and it dates back to, I would say, beyond six years ago. So we're just checking um, what the history is and whether it's, um, you know, what the next bit part of the process is, if that makes sense, without going into too much detail. Um, so we're looking at it at the moment. It hasn't found its way onto our update appendix for the IDRP because that's covering a financial year up until March. So it'll come onto the next update, if that makes sense. Yep. Thanks, Alison. So in terms of the key administrative activi activities, again, we continue to work with um, the fire service in relation to McLeod. I've already referenced the members of the RCT pensions, oh, sorry, the um, um, five new staff recruited and joined to the team in April. Um, it's really positive we went out on a recruitment process. Um, obviously, we do work for the uh, local government scheme as well, um, which has similar pressures around uh, McLeod and workloads. Um, so we were able to um, recruit during that pe period. And again, um, that will help us build resilience for the fire service as well as the local government scheme. Um, the uh, dashboard, so this is the national pensions dashboard scheme that's being undertaken um there's um we we've had a, a notification that the onboarding schedule has been suspended and revised regulations are to be laid with new time scales so we're doing everything that we can do our end in relation to that national scheme um but in terms of the dash in terms of the dashboard program itself that's outside outside of um um our remit really other than to provide information when when we're asked um but it's important that that uh, board are, are updated in terms of that program the pension increases have been applied uh and now the team are currently uh starting uh to look at the annual benefit statement program um, so obviously our, our annual be pension benefit um, statements to our ski members have to be published by the um, end of August 
Um, that's a statutory requirement. So that so so that exercise is underway. Um, on the in the budget in 2023, there were some tax changes, um, which did which did will impact our scheme members. Um, so the increase in annual allowance from 40,000 to 60,000. So that's the amount um, that um, scheme members can save in terms of the re revaluation um, of their scheme benefits. Um, lifetime allowance excess char charges removed from April 23 and lifetime allowance to be removed from April 24. Um, and finally, um, we've got an online proof of life existence um, exercise um, where um, members that are scheme members that um, have retired and live abroad or live overseas, um, we're able to send them through this Crown Agents a link um, where they can provide us with digital photos around um, facial recognition software, um, which will actually um, is something that we need to do for overseas pensions for for um, pensioners that live in um, the UK. We have. Um, mortality checks with um, the registrar's service and everything's far more difficult where people live overseas. Um, so what this does is ask the member to confirm, um, I know it, and it may sound a little bit morbid, but they, they are still with us and and really it's through this software we do these proof of life exercise. So that's a new thing that we've introduced and it's been really successful there for um, both this scheme and um, our local government scheme. And I think that was it from me, Chair, unless there's any questions from members. No. I'm glad you said about the on online proof of it. I was going to ask about that. <laughs> I was that totally confused with that. So. Yeah, it, 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 it sounds... Sure it's, in the book. Th th thank you, Chair. So it does sound a little bit morbid, but, but obviously it's something that's important to us in terms of keeping in touch with um our ski members thank you right then the, thank you very much for that presentation um the recommendations are one that members of the local pension board note the performance data included at pennies <laughs> one attached to the report and two that members note the relevant pension administrative overview and update included in the appendix to attach the report uh, is that all agreed thank you very much Right then, we we'll now uh, move on to item number six, which is the internal disputes resolution procedure. Update on cases over the last 12 months, and I believe Alison's taking us through that. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So um, this is our annual update of cases that we've viewed over the last financial year. Um, so we follow the Welsh Government um, dispute resolution procedure. And uh, you will see that at Appendix B, um, we have one case that we heard over the last financial year. Um, I just thought of the type of the uh, table there. Um, on the right hand side, under decision summary, it should say as per the contract. So, this particular case, the individual um, wants to be treated as um, service recognised in their on-call and full-time contracts as one single aggregated um, pension. That's not um, the uh, route that we follow, um, but this has now gone or is going to stage two. So this will be heard by our final authority members as a stage two IDRP. And we also just talked about the complaints that came in via RCT pensions. That will go into the new financial year update as well as stage two for this um, aggregated contract one. So um, one here last year and now proceeding to stage two and one um, about to be considered for stage one. So quite, quite I would suggest, which I touch wood, um, for the last financial year, um, have to take any questions really. Uh, <clears throat> for the complaint, the complaint going to stage two. 
what was the outcome of stage one and, and such? So the outcome is that we um, apply the pension related to the contract. So mm -hmm. the, the individual wanted an aggregated uh, pension under the applied pension scheme. Yeah. And our position is that we would allocate if they're full time to the 2015 or 1992, whichever, um, mm -hmm. to reflect um, full time service. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, refused, essentially not upheld. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else want to raise anything? No, can't say anything. Anyway, the recommendations are that the members note the procedures for resolving internal disputes and that the members note the cases considered un under the IDRP procedure to be first of April 2022 to March uh, 31st of March 2023. Is that agreed? Yes. Lovely, thank you very much. Right, we will now move on to item number seven, which is the pensions regulated returns 2022 2023. I believe I'm going to take this with us as well. Thank you, Chair. So, um, this report uh, provides the information that we have submitted to um, the pensions regulator. The attachment at um, Appendix A is the actual uh, return that we filled in. Um, this was submitted on the 17th of February this year. And what you will see is quite a, a detailed questionnaire. Um, and I probably wouldn't propose to go through every question and answer, but just to give you a snapshot of the sort of data that's in here. Um, there are, so we were asked to confirm the number of local pension board meetings that we hold throughout um, a year, what actions we are taking to upskill members in terms of the knowledge required to undertake your role, um, risks relating to pensions and how we address those. I think currently on this point, we have a strategic risk register that covers off pensions risks. But what we'd like to do at our next meeting is start an LPB risk register. So just thought I'd take the opportunity of um, covering that point off. Um, we were also asked about our approach to McLeod, what our resourcing model looks like, um, and our readiness to implement McLeod. Um, there's a section on budgets, annual benefit statements, um, as Ian just mentioned, how people receive those, and um, what information the LPB has received in relation to pension dashboard, which is um, what Ian also just mentioned. So there's a lot of data in here, a lot of information. We've attached it for your information. Happy to take any questions. It's a good case. <clears throat> Does anybody want to raise anything? No? Right, okay then. Um, our recommendation that members note the returns which are shared for information and awareness purposes. Agreed? Yeah. Thank you. Right then, you know, we go on to number eight, the new members training session. Members handbook. Yes. And this is the verbal update, I believe. On yes. Today. So I'm going to ask Kim Geel, our right. pensions lead, just to take us through um, the handbook. Conscious that we haven't got any new members in LPB <laughs> at the moment. And I'm um, born. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's my born. first meeting. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> um, so. Uh, Kim's going to give us a quick romp through, but with an offer of a follow-up detailed conversation if anybody mm -hmm. would like to take her up on it. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Alvin, for Chair. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to skip through, if you like, because when we put this together, we we didn't know how many new members would be sitting on the board. Um, so from a, from a content point of view, um, it was the year before last, uh, you decided to try and put a handbook together, if you like, for all new incoming members to just give an idea of what the local pension board is about, the roles and responsibilities of the members, in terms of reference, what what um, what you consider, what's out of scope and all those sorts of things. So if I go through the contents page, uh, just for the moment, uh, appreciate that you've only had this this morning, because um, with the training sessions, we tend to do them verbally and, and quite proactively. 
Um, so if you'd all like to go through this and just have a read through by the next meeting in October, if you go through the Word doc, you'll see that there are a load of links there that will take you to the relevant pieces of information, the relevant websites, relevant legislation. OK, so that's really helpful in finding these things. So we talk about the membership of the local pension mm -hmm. board. So it's constitution, what's quorum and those sorts of things, how many meetings we have a year. The terms of reference are key. So again, you, you may have caught, um, heard Pam asking Al this morning because we didn't have any employer representatives. Really, um, could the meeting go ahead? So yes, it can. I think it's four hours it? for as long as there's an employee representative in attendance. So those sorts of things are key really to um, how these meetings are shaped, you know. The pensions regulator are, are a good source of information for all things pensions, especially public sector. So um, section four is on the pensions regulators guide to the code of practice 14. I'd say that's a really good read, but that sounds really sad. But it is, it, it is, <laughs> it is, the link is in there. Please have a read. It is part of your responsibilities to be as up to speed as you can really with the expectations of the pensions regulator. They do hold significant powers. So if they feel that this board or this service, the scheme manager even, is not upholding um, the rules and regulations, even with regards to governance around um, pension schemes, it can come in and make our life uncomfortable and even afford recommendations and in extreme cases award fines. So I don't I think we're pretty good, but they have some powers. Section five is that the pension regulator guide to pension board members. So again, more information for the members themselves on expectations, making you all aware that the board is not a decision making board, it's a governance board. And the sections in there around conflict of interest um, and other key pieces of information around legislation. Um, in, in fact, section six is particularly around conflicts of interest. Um, and the internal disputes resolution process. So that's a small document, but it's worth reading just to understand what the process is. Uh, in order to make life easy for anybody who wants to have a look at the, the scheme guides or legislation, I put links in there for the 92 scheme, the compensation scheme, new fire pension scheme and so on. So there's a link there for each one of those schemes. So if you want to have a look at the legislation, it'll take you straight there. In section 12, there's, there's, there's quite a good table for fire pension scheme comparisons. I don't know if anybody's, you may have seen one before, that just simply sets out in tabular form the comparisons between the schemes, the, the key um, factors, if you like. So. Um, the normal pension, uh, normal pension age of each scheme, deferred pension age. It talks about the differences in ill health retirement factors, um, the differences in the commutation rates, death factors. So that's a really like a quick guide. So if anybody's interested in seeing the significant differences between the schemes, so that's the best quick guide to use. Um, and, you know, we give those out sometimes just for people to have an idea on the key differences. Mm -hmm. That's at section 12. Section 13 talks specifically around conflict resolution. So again, that's an avid read, given that this board is all around governance. Section 14, reporting breaches of the law. Again, as a pension board member, um, you, you have an obligation to report any breaches of the law to the TPR through its whistleblowing blow, process if you feel there has been one. And this section 14 will talk you through what you need to consider, the information that's led you to uh, believe uh, such facts, who you can talk to, maybe who you shouldn't talk to, and how to get in touch and report a breach should you need to. Then a section 15, we've got the LPB training strategy and framework. So I'll talk to earlier about um, the ongoing, so at each meeting, there's normally a training session 
Um, so there's an LPB training strategy on what the members need to be kept up to date with, what maybe needs to be self-learning. We will always try and point you in the direction. Um, and and there, is, there are some in this report. The circulars that have come out recently, information that the LGA provides, and that's all part of their strategy to keep to try and keep the members updated. Um, and finally, at 16, there's the LPB training needs analysis form. That's definitely worth taking a look at. That sets out the areas that we will at some point, probably in the next meeting, ask you to complete on <coughs> around your understanding and knowledge of the different areas of pensions. We'll have those back. And then for the following meeting, hopefully we can start to pick up on the areas that the majority feel that you um, have the biggest gaps within. I would draw you to page 36, which talks about the TPR toolkit. Um, the TPR put a really good online toolkit together for public sector pension board members. So everybody that sits on this board, um, it is a requirement to sit on this board that you will need to do the online toolkit. Um, it, no, it would normally take, I would say, two to three hours to do if you if you consider it properly. What did you find, Guy? I know Gareth did it online. There's some areas that are quite complex. Yeah, it, it took a good four or five hours, yeah. maybe two sessions, yeah. two good sessions. Yeah. Um, but you'll all need to do that, really, to, to show that you actually understand what this board is about, to be honest. When does it have to be done by? When does it have to be completed? Could I ask by the next meeting? Because right, okay. technically, Every member should have done training even before they come onto the board. So if everybody could, if they haven't done so already, I know we've got a couple of members that have already done it. If you could log on, there's a link in the handbook mm. that will take you there. If anybody is struggling or needs some assistance, um, I'm more than happy to help out. I can't do it for you, but I can, uh, you know, uh, help you to go through it. If you've got some pertinent questions, if there's sections that you're struggling with, just drop me an email or give me a call and we can go through that then. Um, but that would be my my biggest shout out, I suppose, for the next meeting is can you do the toolkit, please? Um, and I think that is a, is, is a very quick overview of that handbook. I didn't really want to trawl through it all, but if you could read through it yeah. by October's meeting and then either before then come back to me with any questions or if you want to raise some questions at the next meeting, we can do that as well. Well, thank you. We've got some interest in reading. We need to get the message out to the members in the tune yeah. today, isn't it? Yeah, we'll yeah. send it as well. Yeah. Does anybody yeah. members want to ask any more questions? Any questions now? How many new members are on the board now? Yeah, one. Just an observation, really. Yeah. First, the contact they had of anyone off the pensions board is an invite to this meeting. So it may have been a good idea to maybe have a little chat with you prior to this. And prior to that one email I had to invite you to the pensions board. That's just my observation as a new member here. Okay. It might be a good idea to have a little informal chat with you and then, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think we're all on a learning curve. Yeah, yeah. Noted. Okay, oh, well, thank you very much for that, Kim. And That's I'm sure okay. we all take it on board. Yeah. Take questions any time. Yeah. So. As long as we get the message out to the board. Yeah, do that. So it needs to be done by October. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'll do item number nine, which is publications and updates information, which is a standard item, I believe. Yes. I don't know whether you want to run through <laughs> I will. I'll do a quick run through just to highlight some areas of interest and um, potential reading for you as well. So um, the highlights I've picked out for you are starting on page 71. Um, is an FPS bulletin around ill health reassessment and um, just worth the read in terms of ill health retirement and processes. Um, pension dashboard has been mentioned a few times today and on page 74 there's an update on um, the pension dashboard. Um, as Ian said, uh, we were really planning to be onboarded, I think, at the end of this year, perhaps early next year, but that's been pushed back. So um, that's a, a bit of a sigh of relief, I think, from, from all of us in terms of onboarding to that national pensions dashboard. Um, page 75 references 
for a new pensions ombudsman, um, a chap called Dominic Harris. Um, so just a highlight of that, Kings mentioned the ombudsman and the interest in things like this board. So just highlighting that for you. Page 76, um, HMRC's uh, publication on um, the consultation re regarding tax and remedy. And you'll see in a later report that we've responded to that consultation. Um, page uh, 83, the next one around data collection, the remedy, so that links to my cloud. Um, and uh, just to highlight the bottom of that page, FRS is now working through thousands of lines of data. Um, Kim will be able to speak more about this, but um, we're all now prepping for the implementation of the cloud. So that works underway. And while I've got the floor on that, we've made a decision to um, bolster the resource in, in Kim's team. Yeah. So we've, we're have we recruiting a um, temporary resource to support McLeod yeah. and O'Brien. So that will go live shortly. I think Kim will be to the ad, but I'll speak on next. Yeah. Yeah. Um, page 84, the Matthews um, fact sheet, and that's at the bottom of page 84. We've talked before about Matthews O'Brien. Um, England referred to uh, this piece of work as Matthews and Welsh Government to call it O'Brien. So we'll call it Matthews O'Brien for the purposes of this board. And this is about extending the scope for um, uh, applicability for on-call employees to access pension. So that's an ongoing piece of work for us. Page 88 refers to the tax rules remedy being laid. So we responded to consultation and that um, and HMRC and I are pushing ahead with putting the tax regulations in place for McLeod. Um, page 88 also pensions indexation and revalorisation um, as part of a look at um, indexation. Uh, there has been some adjustments and the updates are con uh, confirmed in that section. Um, consultation on remedial service, page 95. So um, we have responded to consultations on remedy, uh, both the English um, uh, consultations and the Welsh Government consultation, which again are captured in a later report for your information. Um, page 99, uh, cost cap, there's been a judgment on the cost cap mechanism um, around uh, a judicial review um, and the information is contained in a bulletin there and references to the High Court ruling that Treasury's decision to include the cloud sergeant remedy in the cost cap mechanism was not unlawful. Page 100, uh, there's a bit of an overview of the spring budget and the impact on pensions. So um, quite useful to, to have a look at that. Uh, page 102 is a GAD blog on the pension dashboard on board in the data matching. Again, pensions dashboard. This is a national exercise where um, individuals would be able to trace pensions that are in the system for themselves on an individual basis. And then being on EVO, what does GAD stand for? Oh, Government Actuaries Department. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, Chair. Um, page 103, then there's um, an update at the top of that page um, to the scape rate methodology. The consultation on this closed in August of 21. And then in March 23, the government announced the publication of its response. Quite a delayed response on that. Um, and uh, the update is the rate to be used as part of the ongoing value valuations will be based on GDP, gro G GDP growth figures. So the new discount rate is CPI plus 1.7%. So again, worth having a, a look at that. And I think that's probably all I would mention for now. That's part of the publications update. Thank you very much. Very in Yes. And does any member want to raise any? No. I can't, don't jump all at once. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for that.
the next one is um, item number 10, which is the firefighters' pensions update on current national exercise in McLeod and O'Brien. Um, yeah. Are you taking that on? Yeah, thank you, Chair. So, um, again, this is a almost a standard item for us as a board. Um, what we have in this update is an extension um, section to cover off O'Brien. So the update up until now is focused on McLeod. Um, and in terms of McLeod, this, I, I would say probably status quo in terms of our, our um, response, which is we are currently processing immediate detriment cases, um, category one cases. So these are cases where individuals are still employed by the service, but um, they are or have made a decision to retire. So we are offering them two pensions estimates um, statements, which allows them to access remedy um, earlier than other um, FRSs. Uh, approach and what I would say for Paul's benefit is all cases that we offer remedy to, uh, we will have to relook at them at the end of um, the rules and regulations being launched as part of McLeod. So um, the McLeod update appendix one gives you an update on the numbers of cases we've, re we've um, processed and that's up to 44. That number is since the fire authority has made the decision to process immediate detriment, and that took effect from October 21. So we've processed 44 cases since October 21. Um, we just to pick up on the data set. So Kim and the team are working through the data that will be used from cloud. So this is working with Ian's team in RCT pensions to get the data ready so that we're in a good place. Um, as I've mentioned, we've bolstered our resourcing model to support that work. Um, so that's the update on McLeod. In terms of O'Brien, um, what I would say just to sort of expand on the sort of the definition of O'Brien. So this is an entitlement from the year 2000 to reflect part-time workers' rights. Um, O'Brien sets out that service prior to 2000 must now be included. Um, and I think for many fire and rescue services across the UK, this is going to be a potential challenge around data and access to information. Um, Kim and the team have already done some work, some groundwork on this. Um, so we're starting to gear up to implement O'Brien. Um, and likely that O'Brien will be introduced at the same time as we've found, so October 2023. So um, uh, October is going to be a, a big month, I think, for us. Um, there is going to be a consultation piece undertaken on O'Brien, um, and that is currently out, I believe. It's closed now. Closed. So out, it went out in April and is now closed. So we'll look at um, what the outcome of that consultation is. Um, Kim and team have already written out to those who we think are eligible and uh, non-eligibles. So we've done the non-eligibles mm -hmm. at the moment of those that we don't think are eligible um, based on the criteria. We've had a couple of responses um, around those that feel that they are. So the team have looked at those and of those that responded, which was still in single figures. We have two that we'll bring into the eligible camp now. But, you know, a shout out to anybody that is in comms, particularly you guys. Um, if, if somebody said a non-eligible letter and they feel that they are eligible for whatever reason, please contact us and we can look into that. So we sent out, I think it was 360 yeah. letters to those that we feel are non-eligible based on this criteria. And we have another 480, I think, that are in the eligible camp. Um, Going back to Alison's point around data, um, from the records that we hold, our earliest service goes back to 1968. Um, and what we're going to struggle with, and nationally, is pay scales prior to 2001, I think. The LGA have done their best to publish what they, what they hold on record. There are talks um, of the government actually departments so guards coming up with some sort of fixed model for 
um, services that don't have pay information prior to 2001 or 2000, which would definitely would be us. We could only go back through the payroll system in the last exercise, I think, back to 2001 and 2000 was an average of. So there's going to be a, a very large gap of data for most fire and rescue services. They will have changed payroll providers, pension providers, HR software, all of which we've done. And therein currently lies the challenge. But, um, you know, the, the working groups, the LJ in particular, are working alongside GAD and other bodies to come up with a solution. GAD will provide a calculator. They did last time, which was really good. Um, but now, obviously, it's going back a lot, a lot, a lot further than it did before. So we'll yeah, we just tracing records see. back is not easy, is it? No, and we can only use the information that we hold here. Yeah. If 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 there is a gap in our information, then we are reliant on people coming forward. So you know, we have put a shout out to anybody that knows X on call, people that may have left the area. You know, to if they don't receive a letter, come end of the year to to just write in and contact us. Right. Big piece of work. Mm. Yeah. Does anybody wish to ask any questions? Only just a couple of things, Chair. Um, first of all, thanks. And so, just with as to that complication, and that is a real complication. There's work ongoing to try and get yes. past that. Yes, it's a national problem. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and then, secondly, can we be of assistance in any way uh, from a comms perspective and communicating? And if so, what that what should we be saying? So, or do you want to have a chat after? And yeah, should we pick up after? We've got, we put some comms out, but even if you could just pick that, we put something out, I think, in the magazine, like a shout out. So I think we also have done, we've done a little posters and flyers for stations, I want to say. But yeah, if we can catch up after the meeting, if you're free for mm -hmm. 10 minutes, just to just to talk about that, yeah. you know, to get people to come forward. That would be really helpful. It's good, yeah. yeah. The only question I got here is, um, uh, with regards to McLeod, really, we, we know the numbers processed from October 2021 is 44. Yeah. Do we know how many numbers are prior to that from 2015 to 2021 who have finished and are... Category 2, is it? Yeah. Yeah, so we've got 60 plus Category 2s. So they are they have already been identified right. and they will take priority come, yeah. come the day in October. So um, not only will we be working through the 10,000 plus lines of data from the cloud, we will prioritise the CAT tools that we already have in the back. Yeah. But it won't be a miracle on October where people get in letters. So, but we will we will try our best to categorize to prioritise CAT tools first. Mm -hmm. Great. Just before we close as well, Appendix yeah. Two contains our responses consultations. Both English and Andrew Welsh goods. So this is about remedy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and also the tax consultation. So they're there for your information. And just a point to note is that currently the um, uh, central government, the English consultation and the Welsh consultation, um, differ in some big areas. Um, so the services responded, if you like, differently to both, but where I have seen there is a, a significant difference between the two consultations. I've actually written that into the English consultation and almost formed a comparison. So a really good example would be if anybody that owes contributions uh, or needs to pay contributions back in England, the way that most people have read the consultation is there'll be no offer of periodic payments. So it will need to be paid. Um, it, you know, and, and for all the people, several thousand pounds is, is a lot of money. Whereas in the Welsh consultation, we've actually factored in there a periodical payment schedule and it'll mirror what the first modified scheme, so up to 10 years. So we've tried to not inadvertently introduce further discrimination across streams in the way people were treated. So, so we feel that the Welsh consultation in the areas of discretion that Welsh governments have got um, have tried to um be fair if you like with with a solution so uh, you see in there the response to both if you if you want to take them yeah. in regards to people with money that would be people that 
drop out the pen channel which change and then be invited to return again. No, oh, so those so come October, oh, everybody's it. service will be rolled back. Yes. So maybe we'll be going back into the 92 in particular. Yeah. So and that'll be part of the exercise of remedy going forward. And vice versa, people on the yeah. will be owned by Yes, so yes, so there's two, a small portion, but the 2006 legacy had a um, uh, different contribution rate in 2015. So they potential. And, and there's, and there's, um, there's processes in there where the government is suggesting that actually somebody who um, may be able to refund, shall we say, um, and the benefits of the 2015 for some may be more beneficial. There's a process there where there can be an agreement where, in fact, they, they don't get a refund. Um, because in, in essence, they've already made an immediate choice to take a 2015 at the end rather than to further it. So there's a small portion in there about that as well. Very much. Thank you for that. Um, working for today. Um, our recommendation is that the members note the content. Note it. That's very Right, um, so before we go, I'm going to Yeah, so after the next meeting, we've added in the risk register. So, we've mentioned what the risk register I have got nothing here, I'm sure you'll be pleased. Oh, you were, you were, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I possibly should have agended it, but it was just some clarification around the GAD modeler that mm, yeah. we, uh, we did have a discussion the month ago or so. But. The, the GAD modeler has, um, not by us, been put on pause to a certain extent. Um, the technical issue that we reported in the last meeting still remains, and it's become quite frustrating to manage that. I um, contacted GAD and our partner agencies a week ago, mm -hmm. Alan, darling, with a little bit of an ultimatum, to be honest with you, around um, either fix our current platform, it's the new one, or the one has to be a bit firmer. Uh, GAD have picked that up, and I did see a response on Friday around a different solution for deployment by our partner agency. I'm waiting for another update this week. But we're now at the place where um, we've paid for it. We're more than three months past when we envisage it going live. So we're coming to the end of our patients. Guards are aware of that. So I'm really hoping that they, they can come up with a, a fast solution for deployment. So we're still working toward getting it put in place, but... Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And then, okay? Yeah, and there was just one more chair, sorry. Yes, I've been no problem. Um, I'm, I'm sure this is all done, but it's just some assurances that it was quite complex in the year 22-23 with regard to our pay award. It came very much at the end of the year. Um, everything's been done in the background to reflect anyone who retired in that year, but before the pay award yeah. with respect to their pension. Yes, yeah. yeah. So the arrears of pay have been paid to our payroll section. Mm -hmm. All of the financial information has gone up to RCT to Ian's team, so they will now need to pick up the pension adjustments. That's what we're asking about. Yeah, today. sure. They will be done. Yeah. But I think given the resource implications, they they may be done over a period of time. Yeah. But what we are asking anybody that um, rings into our team is we're pointing them in the direction of RCT. Sorry, Ian, around the time scales for those payments because there's work to be done by RCT. Sure, we can also pass on to our members yeah. that it is in hand. It is in hand. And, and just yes. wait a little bit and yes. get done. And then, yeah, it is in hand. Hi, Chair. Yeah, it's just just that reassurance, really, that uh, you know these, these these things do obviously happen, um, and and you know we we do have to then unfortunately pick it up after the event rather than it being be in a current process, but uh, no, that that reassurance is there that that's underway. 
Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Anybody else want to raise anything issues? No? Well, I will close the meeting and thank you all for your attendance. And we look forward to yeah. the next. And after we've done all, all that work. <laughs>